Welcome to Grow Alabama TV. My name is Chef Adam. I'm down here at the warehouse today and I'd like to uh, take a few minutes and walk you through your box. I've been excited in weeks past, uh, every week guys, for our produce that comes in from the field and I do love it. Uh, this week though, all weeks look good, but this week in particular I really, really am excited about because it's some of my favorite ingredients, some of my favorite things to cook with. Uh, everything I really enjoy, but this week in particular looks really good. So if you will, let me show you what I have for you. Returning from last week, we have the green beans again. We're going to have two varieties. Some folks will be getting blue lakes. Some folks will be uh, uh, getting the, uh, the rattlesnake variety as well. It all depends on how much we have coming in from the farmer, but we will have beans for everybody this week, but we'll be running two varieties. Uh, the beans work uh, really well. These you will need to string, but they're very delicate strings, so you don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, I also want to take you, we have, we have the beets again this week. Uh, the beets will still be going uh, all through the rest of the week. They're looking really good from the farm. Uh, candied beets is something that I did this weekend with just a little bit of sugar, a little honey. Uh, pulled them down a little bit and just cooked them, uh, simmered them lightly in a sugar solution until they kind of coat with a glaze and they'll have a very sugar crunch exterior on them that's just delicious and you just want to peel those, slice them and saute them down in a pan. Uh, Chilton County peaches are back. They're getting soft. They're, uh, I personally love them uh, when they do get a little bit softer. They're getting great for cobblers, peach pies, uh, anything you may want to do, peach melba. Uh, works really well. Uh, they are softening up as we get more into the summer, but they're still very juicy, very sweet. Love the Chilton County peaches. Uh, vine ripe red tomatoes, and we're starting to get into our heirloom tomatoes. Uh, these varieties work really well. Of course, everybody, you know, if you don't know what an heirloom tomato is, that is a species of seed type that was grown in the 50s and 60s and kind of went out of production and now they're really coming back. They're having a, a heirloom tomato revival in the south. A lot of folks are growing them. I love them. I think they have fantastic flavor uh, but the heirloom varieties are really nice. Any, any bumps you may see, that's just the heirloom variety cut around it. Nothing harmful about that. They're grown in the field. They're not going to look pristine. They're going to have some bumps but the ones that have the bumps, trust me, are the best ladies and gentlemen. Um, Cucumbers to go with our tomatoes again. Working really well through the heat of the summer. Cucumbers will probably be growing all the way through the end of June on into July very well. Don't see a lot of cucumbers fall off. They grow really well here in Alabama. Now what I want to stop for a minute and show you today is we've got some jalapeno pepper varieties and I don't know if y'all can see them, but they're the little delicate green jalapeno peppers. Uh, people think, you know, all peppers vary in degree of heat, but there are a few tricks that you can do to kind of cut down on the heat of your pepper. Uh, and what you generally want to mainly do, and what, what, where the heat content comes from in your jalapeno, a lot of people say it's the seeds, but it's not really so much the seeds. There are veins in every form of pepper that, uh, that grows, and they're full of a chemical called capsaicin. And capsaicin is what's in pepper spray and in, in concentrated quantities. And you'll notice I'm wearing vinyl gloves, guys. They're okay really maybe to handle bare hand uh, with the skins intact if you haven't cut them yet. Although I have gotten some pepper burns even just off the jalapenos. Uh, people say you should really just only worry about that when, you know, habaneros come in. Uh, but any pepper is hot and any pepper will burn your skin. So please wear latex or vinyl gloves, whichever one you're not allergic to. And you just really want to clean out the seed cavity and the vein specifically. Now the seeds are going to pull right out, but this little vein wall that I want you to see, there's a little bit of white trim. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking my finger and I'm just scraping that vein right out of the pepper. Now if you like your heat, if you're a big chili head, and I know we have a lot of them around, what you'll want to do there is just leave, you know, you may want to take your seeds out, but leave your veins in. Uh, if you really enjoy the heat. And then you can just take them and just kind of run your knife right through them. Do a little dice. It goes well in your sauces uh, with your tomatoes. Uh, order cilantro from the online store this week and you've got everything you need to make a really nice pico de gallo already in your box for you. Uh, but the jalapenos are coming in. And like I say, just please wear gloves. Be very careful when you break those down because those seeds will burn your hands. Uh, so be careful with your jalapenos. To go along with them, and just to reiterate the point too, are some nice, lovely green bell peppers. The green bell peppers, although not, they don't have any capsaicin in them, but you can see 
that the pepper structure is the same. They have the same seed, the same vein structure, but just not hot. Whereas in the jalapeno, you really, really want to clean that out. And the green bell pepper, you don't have to worry about the veins. There's not really any heat to them to speak of. Generally, your smaller peppers and your green peppers are always going to be your hot peppers. Uh, eggplant. Eggplant is an ingredient that I fell in love with back home uh, in Mississippi over toward Oxford in that area. People really love to fry it. I've tried just this week making baba ganoush, which is essentially just a, an Indian or a Middle Eastern eggplant puree with a lot of hot spices and garlic in it. You make them in your food processor. All you want to do for that, stew down, saute down your eggplant with onions, flavor it how you like it. Put it in your food processor at home. It makes a great dip to go with pita breads, different things of that nature. But the eggplant working out really well for us through the summer. Squash variety is back. I love the little squashes, guys. Working really well. Uh, you know, squash casserole, you know, we've done it. We like it. We can still do it if we want to. Uh, but the little, the little Mediterranean squashes, there's no seeds in them, guys. The seeds are very small. I love, love these cooked together with the crooknecks. They work out really well. Uh, and they're so fresh and so crisp. I really hate to see you make a casserole out of them. I really like to let you just enjoy them as it is. Um, now last week I was suggesting roasting new potatoes to serve with steak. This week to give you something kind of different to do maybe, uh, what I'd like you to do is kind of, you know, take out your new potatoes, uh, wash them a little bit when you get them home. You, uh, you want to not necessarily maybe roast them this week, but do something different. Kind of put them in a, uh, a low sauce pot on your stove, real low heat, and just lightly simmer them in olive oil with garlic herbs, uh, you know, salt and pepper, maybe some olives, shallots, whatever you like. They'll come out really unctuous and really coated with the oil, and you want to drain that oil off and then re-season them. The oil won't actually be in the potatoes, but it'll have that unctuous mouthfeel that'll make you really think you're getting fat content and I hate to kind of trick you a little bit, but it'll give you that taste of butter or that oil that you really like with your potato, but it actually won't be inside the potato. So something really cool and new you can do is to do an oil poached uh, potato. Also, I have uh, zucchini varieties going in with the squash as well. So we've got crookneck squash, Mediterranean squash, and a zucchini in your box this week uh, to go really well and maybe like a uh, chilled vegetable salad or something like that. Uh, I do want to talk with you a little bit about cabbage today. The Napa that was out. Uh, la hey Juan, hey, how, how you doing, doing bro? Uh, doing Great, man. Oh, that's a beautiful cabbage, sir. Beautiful. Uh, when did you pick these, Juan? Uh, this morning. This morning these were picked in? Great. Yes. They look beautiful. Uh, Juan's uh, our farmer, one of our farmers from Marsh Farms. Uh, he, um, he was also growing our Napa earlier this season, but the Napa's run out, so now he's got some, uh, some beautiful looking green cabbages. I want you to all get a look inside there. You've got these beautiful leaves and you've got this wonderful tiny little cabbage head. Juan, those look great. And you have any other cabbage varieties? Uh, red cabbage. Red cabbage is yes. coming in probably uh, about three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Be ready. Okay, so in three weeks we're going to have you some red cabbage. So while the Napa's run out and it'll be back this fall, we still want to do some green and some red for you. So that's coming in. Juan, I really appreciate it, man. You're Thank welcome, you so man. much for You're stopping welcome. by today. Juan also gives us our onions too, guys, and several other things. Thanks so much, You're Juan. Welcome. We'll see you again next Monday. So there's our green cabbage, guys, for the week. Looks really good. It all looks beautiful. Thanks again so much to Juan. They look really beautiful. Uh, guys, that's everything in the box this week. I'm so excited. Everything looks really fresh. Uh, what I'd like you to do for me, if you could, uh, is stay tuned for Farm Nouveau Catering's uh, cooking demonstration with Chef Bob. He'll be on again this week teaching us how to do some stuff with our beautiful produce. Uh, I'd also like for you to check back again with me next week. I want to keep doing the weekly delivery menu for you guys, let you know what's coming in your box. Uh, if you have any problems with anything you're ever sent, don't hesitate to contact me at adam at growalabama.com. Uh, thank you all very much, uh, all my customers out there I'd like to appreciate. and Just keep in mind a few things and, and watch your peppers and enjoy all your fresh produce. And be sure to check us back again next week uh, for your next weekly delivery menu. Thank you very much.